For this problem, they just want you to find the limit and then find the largest delta. So this is just the statement of what the epsilon delta definition is. So the actual limit is limit as x approaches to 1 minus x squared. So let's find the actual answer to this limit. So if you plug in 2 for where x is, you'll get 1 minus 4. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So now you can use this definition, and the two most important piece of, pieces of information are these two, and then fill out everything you know. So all I did was rewrite those two pieces of information, and now I'm going to plug in everything I know. So here I plug in that c is equal to 2, and where did I get that? Well here, from the definition. This number, x approaches a number, that number is 2, so I plug that in. And then f of x is just, f of x is just the um, uh, function right here, 1 minus x squared. Uh, L is the actual answer, negative 3. L is the actual answer. And then it's less than epsilon. So here you just simplify. So negative negative makes a positive. So positive 1 plus positive 3 is equal to positive 4. And then you can factor that out to make x minus 2 times negative x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So now you have, um, now what you're going to do is you, you want to make this equal to, you, because since you're trying to find delta, you want to make this equal to this. So therefore you can have a number um, you can set. So this will all make sense when I actually do it. So here, the first step is to get rid of the absolute value. How, are you, how you're going to do that is you're going to bound delta is less than 1. And you can memorize this, but this is why we do it. You can bound delta to whatever number you want. Because since this is an inequality, all I'm saying is that I want this to be 1. Uh, you can make this 10 or 100, but 1 is very, very um, uh, convenient. So I'm going to use 1. So now I have 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 1. So... Now I'm going to rewrite that as negative 1 is less than x minus 2 without the absolute value is less than 1. These two are exactly the same. So all I did was just rewrite it as this. So now I'm going to take x minus 2 and then convert it to negative x minus 2. So how do we do that? Well, we'll start by uh, getting rid of the 2. So we'll add 2 to each of these. So if we add 2 here, we'll get 1. If we add 2 here, we'll get x. If we add 2 here, we'll get 3. After that, what we'll do is, since we want a negative x, we'll multiply everything by negative 1. So we get negative 1, negative x, and negative 3. Finally, we want a negative 2, so we'll, we'll add negative 2 um, to each of these. So when we add negative 2, we get negative 3, negative x minus 2, and then negative uh, 2 to negative 3 is negative 5. So what you can do now is you can bound it to the num the largest number. So you take the absolute value of both of these and then see which one's the largest. Meaning if you made both of these positive, if you made no matter what these numbers are, if you made both of them positive, which one's the lar largest number? So that would be 5. So you'd make it absolute value of negative x minus 2 is less than negative 5. So once you have that, now you can complete it. So over here you have x minus 2 times negative x minus 2. So here x minus 2 times negative x minus 2 is the same as um, delta times negative 5. So how am I getting this? Well negative x or absolute value of x minus 2 I got that from here. x minus 2 is less than delta. So I'm saying that x minus 2 um, is less than delta and then negative x minus 2 is less than negative 5. So now I can multiply both of those. And then all of this is less than epsilon. So after you get all of this, what you can say is, since we're trying to find delta, we can just have this component. So delta times negative 5, negative 5 is less than epsilon. We can divide it by negative 5. And then what we can do is, since we want the actual delta, we can set it equal to epsilon. Um, epsilon is less than negative 5. So, so I'll just write that. So delta is equal to epsilon over f 5, and I'll put the negative up here. 
So delta is epsilon. Delta is equal to negative epsilon over 5. Now the final thing you have to remember is since we bound it to 1, uh, we don't want any confusion. So since we made this 1, we're going to, um, we have to make sure we put that in our answer. So we say delta is equal to the minimum uh, 1 or epsilon over negative 5. So always remember when you do this, you bound it to that number, whatever number that is, which will usually be 1. Just make it minimum 1 or your actual answer, which is epsilon over negative 5. I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.